Thank you. Can you just sit for a while? Let's read a few scriptures. I want you to turn your Bible quickly to the book of John chapter 5. You know, I was sharing with somebody. I said, until people understand the rise of forces, rise of influences in this end time, they will not rise themselves for counter-attack. Because the days we are are the last days, the very last days. And the devil, the enemy of our soul, has changed gear. If you know what it means to change gear, he has changed gear and is fighting with the highest form of energy in this end time that he can ever muster. He has mustered all his demons, all his you know, fallen angels and has equipped them and sent them out. That's why we have, you know, when, when Jesus said in the last days, iniquity shall abound, you would think iniquity will just rise up and abound. No, somebody is called a man of iniquity. Somebody is sponsoring iniquity. And so when you see internet flooded with pornography, when you see things that are supposed to be sinful becoming common, just know that this is not actions. These are warfare. They are targeting men, trying to bring limitations. So, see, whatever that we thrive in this end time, because I don't want to talk about ministry. If I say ministry, someone will say, he's talking about ministry. Any business in the hand of a child of God who will not fraternize with the devil that will succeed in this end time, it must be by warfare. If you as a businessman, you don't rise to fight. If you as a civil servant, you don't rise to fight. If you as a minister, you don't rise to fight. You may see what is happening last 10 years, last 20 years, there is an advancement. Listen, with time, the forces of the enemy advances in all, all sense of the word. I want you to be touched up because, you know, if you don't, you will be kept at a spot while others are moving. Now, last month, the Lord said, go forward. And while I was praying about our movement, God said, you also need to deal with limits. Limits must be broken so that the movement will not be stored at a time. And you see, when you talk about limits, you talk about things that hinder people from pushing, from getting to where they are supposed to get to. You are making movement and you come to a particular point. You notice that there is a pit. You cannot cross the pit. You notice that your movement has been stored. It has ended. You are on a journey. You came to a particular spot. You notice that there is a river. You are not aware of this river. You come to that point. You notice that you can't cross this river. It's a limitation. It has ended your journey somewhat. Limitation. It can come from any source. It can come from sickness. There are people that are limited by sickness. I remember in the book of Luke chapter 13, if you read from verse 10, there was a woman that the Bible said on the Sabbath day in the synagogue, Jesus met this woman. She was bent. She could not lift up herself. She couldn't lift up herself. And Jesus went straight to her and touched her and said, woman, Thou art loosed. Thou art loosed. And the Bible says immediately she was made threat. And then the ruler of the synagogue got so angry. I said, if you want to be healed, come on other days. It's not even the liberation of this woman that was his joy. It was not the, the, the healing of this woman. The limitation around this woman that was broken. That was his concern, but the fact that it was done on a Sabbath day. And then Jesus spoke and said, This is a daughter of Abraham, bound for 18 years by Satan. Bound. Another word for limitation is bondage. Bound. That is to say, you are limited in such a way that, look at the woman, she couldn't lift up herself. The Bible said the woman has spirit of infirmity. 
that spirit has limited her that what she should have done normally, what other women like her is doing, she couldn't do it. She was limited. What about the paralytic in Luke chapter 5 that was brought to Jesus by his four friends? The Bible said they brought him in a bed. This man has correct brain, but he's paralyzed. He cannot do anything. He has a lot of things, but he's limited. That sickness limited him. Now, I want you to see this passage we are about to read. Are you in John chapter 5? Eh? I want us to read from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there was a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind hot, withered waiting for the moving of the water now before we read further I want you to pay attention here in this particular space there are great multitudes. Please listen. Can somebody say great multitudes? Great There's a difference between multitude and great multitude. The people that are here are not small number. There are so many of them. They are large in their number. And the Bible called them impotent folk. That impotency is talking about one thing or the other that has become a limitation around your life. Are you following me? They were limited. Some of them were limited by blindness. What made them impotent was not that they, are, they, are, they don't have hands, they can walk. But by their blindness, they can't see, they become impotent. They are limited. Now, you see, the word limitation is talking about these are what this person in his normal state can do and could have done. But when limitation comes, it keeps you at a particular level that you cannot cross to get to that which you would have been able to achieve. Impotency. Some who are blind, they can't see. A blind man cannot do business. A blind man may wish to do many things, but he cannot. That was why whenever you ask any blind man, what, even if he's a beggar, what do you want me to do for you? He said that I will see. Not give me money, because if you give me money, in my blindness I will eat it and I will remain limited. Now, there are some that are hot. That word hot means crippled. They are crippled. Now, this kind of people, they, they would have moved forward, but something crippled their life. Some of them we are crippled from birth. Some of them, we are, I've met people that are walking before. Before you know it, something happened and they become crippled. That's how a business can be going, moving. The businessman is busy selling. At a time, the enemy will come and cripple that business. And I prophesy this morning, every business, when I say business, I mean whatever you are doing that has been crippled by the enemy, I command strength and energy to come upon that business and cause it to stand up and walk again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blind. Born blind. And then became blind, by the way. Somebody was telling me yesterday, is it yesterday or two days ago, that somebody was blinded by glaucoma. He couldn't see again. He used to see before. But when that sickness came upon the eyes, the eyes became blinded. I said, the person is alive, healthy. How many years? Not up to 70 years. But he cannot see. He's limited now. But he's still alive. He's eating. You know, the important, listen, the limited 
they are unfortunate. Think about a blind person. If somebody is giving him food and puts poison or puts something that is dirty, will he be able to... He's just at the mercy of people and let it not be wicked people. Limitation. And then the King James called this one withered. I have to check other version. Another version said they are paralyzed. That is, there's a difference between the hurt and the withered. The crippled is still, the blood is still flowing. The body is still there normally. But the withered is that that part of the body has dried up. There is no blood flowing. If it's leg, you don't feel anything again. No, no movement again. It's withered. There are several businesses, there are several marriages, there are several people that are in that you know, terrible state of impotency. Everything they are doing has dried up. No life again. No, nothing is flowing. Nothing is moving again. It's withered. It's dried up. But, you know, what I want you to see in that verse is that there are not small number of people. Can you imagine? It is, is it the will of God for this great multitude of people to become blind, halted, and withered? No. The Bible said they are impotent folk. Great multitude of people. Great multitude of people. And I prophesy, if you are limited in any way this morning as we are praying and declaring, this is the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not tomorrow, it's now. Your limitations are broken now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 4, why did they gather? For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 30 and 8 years. How many years? 38 years. An angel, you see, that's how they come to know that this, this particular pool is a special pool. In fact, they ought to know that it's an angel because each time the water is troubled, is steered, and somebody enters that is sick, he becomes healed. If it's leprosy that has crippled and limited the person, by the time the person enters into the water, the first to enter, the leprosy leaves. Now, I want you to see the principle of the world system in this uh, particular arrangement. The survival of the survival of the fetus, the first to enter will be the person that will catch it. So everybody is in a competition mood. Everybody is trying to enter first. So it's not about entering the water, it's about entering first. It's not about entering the water at all times, but watching to know the particular season when you should enter. So there are so many factors to consider before you can get that particular scholarship. Before you can get that particular, I mean, finance for your business, there are so many, you know, conditions that are placed. They say these are the people we are selecting, the people that has this, people that has that, and all of that. That's the principle that guides every selection everywhere. Sometimes they will tell you it's the people that scores and so a uh, number of uh, mark for those in academies that we are, you know, a lot of competition, competition, competing for that competing for American visa, competing for Canadian visa, competing for all kinds of space, ministry progress. There are competition everywhere in every aspect of life. Are you getting me? Now, but this man, the Bible said he was there for 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him live, Please note the position that he was, he was in. What is the position? Eh? He was lying down. <laughs> Someone who is lying down, is he ready to compete? He is tired. He's like, I have tried my best. Let me just lie down helplessly here. Are you, are you, are you reading the Bible with me? When Jesus saw him lie, 
he knew that he has been in that condition, in that place for a long time. He just knew. There are people that came yesterday and they are, you know, struggling to enter. I want you to see a picture of this kind of place. Because the Bible says angel comes at a particular season, not every day, not every week. So, people are there, waiting. Some have, you know, I hope you know that people that are selling pure water, people that are selling, selling all kinds of uh, things, there is also a market by that side. Because as the great multitude are there waiting for the water, they wouldn't like to go and buy food somewhere else. Because they are waiting for the water to be troubled. Are you getting it? And I want to also see how people have struggled to enter the water. Because a toad make a normal movement. You know, it's not only, there are many animals in the water. Eh? A big fish can make a movement. A crocodile can make a movement. And when such movement is made, somebody may throw himself there. And there may be cases where the crocodile will even catch the person and that will be the end of the person's life. So there is also a danger in that system of competition. There are hopelessness. Some have entered because a fish made a movement. If you have been near water before, you notice that sometimes when fish made movement, the water will, will, will shake. And somebody will carry himself with all his energy and enter, thinking that this is the engine moving. Before you know it, you will notice that it will come out and nothing happened. When Jesus saw this man, can you read that verse 6 together with me? That's a very key verse for us. One, two, go. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he has been long in that case. Will you want to be made whole? When Jesus saw him lie, Jesus is going to see somebody this morning. He will locate you. He will see. He will see that you have been in this particular limitation for a long time. He just got to know that he has been there for a long time. This is a multitude of people. And this is an anointed man who before he began said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Luke 4, 4 verse 18. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has also sent me to recover the blind eyes. He has also sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, to proclaim to the captives, you are delivered and they will be delivered. He has also sent me to set at liberty those who are oppressed of the devil. Yes. But here is he seeing a great multitude of the blind. You have been anointed to open the eyes of the blind. He should have organized blind eyes opening service in the pool of Bethesda. Because he has been anointed for that purpose. But I want to show you the word of God. The word of God is the word of mercy. We are not qualified for anything. Even when we are saying the limits should break, it is not in our name. I hope you remember. Because on our own, we can do nothing. It was by mercy that Jesus located this impotent man. In the midst of several others that are impotent. It is by the mercy of God that he can come to that family, that particular generation, and locate one man in that family. Excuse me, but everybody in the family is suffering one predicament or the other. Everybody in the family is overrun by idolatry and by all kinds of ancestral spirits limiting everybody. And Jesus will just come and pick one person from that family. It is by mercy. He went to the man and said, do you want to be made whole? Do you want your limitation to end? Please, can you answer that question? You see, the question, do you want to be made whole? is a sign that the man is not whole. The man is existing, but something is lacking. He's not whole. Something has, has left his life. 
Something is making his life incomplete. Let me tell you one thing that you will know, used to know that you are limited. When you try, you see the same thing that you are doing, working for somebody. Are you getting it? Let's say you are doing business. You are selling, let's say, uh, let me use phone accessory. And you located your shop here. And then another person's shop is at that junction. And you notice that people are standing in the line to buy phone accessories from his own shop. But in your own, if you see three people in a day, it is a great number. Some days you will not see anybody. And you will try. You, you ask yourself, why is my business not moving? Why? What is, what is the, the, the thing that is causing this? Listen. When you talk about limitation, it could be, in fact, not it could be, majorly, the physical world is controlled from the spiritual angle. I hope you know that. Are you aware? Yes. Everything you see happening physically has a spiritual control. I repeat, if you see a ministry progressing, a man of God ministry progressing, listen, there is a spiritual control that is causing it to progress. Now, you know there are people that will go to the devil and say, give me power. You remember? And they will fraternize with the enemy. Now, whether it is from the devil, negative spirit, or from God, positive spirit, anything you see physically walking, walking, don't make mistake about it. If you see a student doing well physically, progressing, there is a spiritual control somewhere. If you see people trying to you know, succeed, trying to make progress in their finances, trying to get married, their years are going, somebody will come to marry before you know the person will go away, and all of that. There is something somewhere. And you see, when you talk about limitation, you are talking about something that you have tried on your own to come out of it, and you couldn't come out of it. The woman was bent. The Bible says she could not lift herself. How did we know that she could not lift herself? Because severally, this woman that was bent like this has what? Has tried to lift herself. She has tried to lift herself. But she was so limited that despite all the energy, so she just decided to remain like that. Because something has kept her in that bent condition. Are you getting that? Yes. But there is a mercy. Listen. For you to understand why Jesus has to go to this man alone and not to everybody. That is the principle of mercy. So even coming out of limitation is going to be by God's mercy. By the mercy of God. Because listen. Later, when Jesus met this man, I want you to see something in verse 14. Because Jesus finished ministering to him and disappeared. He ministered to him quietly and left. And then people now saw him carrying his uh, mat on the Sabbath day and say, don't you know that this is Sabbath day? Why are you carrying something on the Sabbath day? And the man said, the person that made me whole told me to carry my bed and go home. So in obedience, I have carried my bed and I'm going home. And then I asked him, who is the person that made you whole? He said, I don't know him. Oh. Can you imagine that Jesus did not even wait for this man to know him before he showed him mercy and broke his limitation. He didn't even wait for him to become so righteous, so holy. Are you getting it? That's why I am telling you, he is by mercy. There may be some people that are more religious than this man in that place. But Jesus never went to them. How did he locate this man for God's sake? How? How? And I prophesy for somebody this morning that God by mercy is locating you. Yeah. And that location of you is going to give rise to every limitation around your life being broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, 
But why I am coming, another stepped down before me. Now, look at it. This is the second limitation. What is the first limitation of this man? The first limitation is that he cannot move. He is impotent. He is crippled. I don't know whether he's with that. Eh? He doesn't have life in his body. He is so limited that he cannot do business, even though he wants to do business. The character of the limited is that you want to do business, but there's no money to start. You want to even apply for loan, but there's no collateral. You want to call people to borrow you money, and they say, don't call this line again. I don't have money. I have won you before. I mean, there are limitations. You see yourself, you are just there at that level. Eh? I have no man. Now, this man, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. I believe that he must have thought about how to really get this miracle. And he saw people that have gotten the miracle. He noticed that the people and their men are always there, waiting for any opportunity. And why he's trying to, people that has men, are you getting it? Will carry their own impotent folk and throw in the, in the water, in the uh, uh, pool, and receive their miracle. So when Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? The first thing he remembered is that I have no connection. I have nobody in the embassy that will ever consider giving me a chance. I have no connection anywhere in the bank or anybody that can ever consider giving me a loan. I have no man. I have no man. So, he's limited first of all in his body and doubly is limited in, in, in that he doesn't have connection. He expressed his second limitation to Jesus and said, so by every chance, by every opportunity, I cannot ever be made whole. I know it. I don't even know why I'm still here. Okay, I'm still here because even if I'm not here, eh, there's nothing that will happen. So let me just be here. People, some people have come to that extent. They have tried, done everything, but they are still where they are. Some of us have given up hope. This man is saying, I have given up hope. I have no man. Can I give you a job in that oil company? I have no certificate. Eh? Can I offer you admission so that you can continue your education? I have no work. I didn't pass my English. I didn't pass my mathematics. And that has become a limitation that I cannot go forward. My academic life has benched at that particular level. I have pass. You know, when you have pass, you know what they call pass in the university or whatever. You cannot do masters. Eh? There's a score you will have. You have ended your academic career. If you don't have 2 one after masters, you can't do a PhD in some universities. Yes. So, can't you go forward? As God is telling us, go forward. And somebody who just got masters, he said, yes, I'm going forward. I'm going to pick my PhD form. But the person is now saying, but I have no qualification to go forward. There's a limitation in this forward movement. I have no man that will connect me, that will speak for me in the parliament. When the you know, management staff gather for the management meeting to decide on cases, I have nobody in the management there. And you see people that have people bragging, I have somebody, I have somebody. So there is a human connection that can solve problems. I hope you know that. Yes. The first problem will be solved when the angel comes to steer the water. But there is a human element that you will need to assess the help. You need connection to assess the help. But when Jesus appeared with the principle of mercy, and God spoke to me and said, the month of August is the month of uncommon mercy. It took uncommon mercy Uncommon. This mercy is not common. For this man to be located, 38 years, eh? he has been in that case, in that condition, for such a long time. 
Sometimes when you see people eh, run away from some certain things, I remember talking to a young man and I was trying to tell him to read the Bible. I was trying to teach him something from the Bible. I say, read the Bible. Open your Bible. Read. He opened. I say, read. He was doing as if he's not seeing it. It took me some time for me to discover that this young man cannot read English. So it was after he was trying to, he didn't want to tell me that I cannot read. Sometimes your limitation, you'll be so much you know, ashamed of it that you will not like people to know. And sometimes when they are appointing people that will work in some certain place and they appoint you, you will just raise your hand and say, excuse me, I don't want to work. It's not that you don't want to work. You already know that there is a limitation around your life that will disqualify you, that will expose you more. And so, you see the person is dodging from the work. He's saying, I cannot do it because there is a limitation. I don't know whether it has, you, you have found yourself in that condition before. You just notice that if I associate myself with this opportunity, I will be exposed. My, my nakedness will be seen. So, let me just remove myself from that. It's a good thing. It's a good opportunity. It will bring me out. It will speak out for, on my behalf. But I am limited. I'm limited. All those objects of shame are removed around your life this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus said to the man, do you want to be made whole? The man said, ah, the truth is that that's why I'm here. I came here and I've been here for a long time for that purpose. I want to be made whole, but I have no man that will help me. And I know that it's only when a man helps me that I can be helped. But let me counter that statement that even if you don't have any man to help you, there is God that will help you. Amen. Verse 8, Jesus said unto him, take up your bed and walk. Rise up. Take up your bed and what? And walk. And what happened? Verse 9. Immediately the man was what? Made whole. And took up his bed. And walked. And on the same day was a Sabbath day. How did this man come, how did he come, come out of his limitation? By the word of God. By the time Jesus spoke to him and said, Rise. Eh? Take up your bed and walk. If you look at that sentence, you notice that it's an English language. Rise. Take up your bed and what? And walk. The moment Jesus said that, the moment he said that, something happened. I don't know whether it has done on you that everything God has done, whether God the Father or Jesus, is by speaking. By what? By speaking. By speaking. Rise! Rise! Take up your bed and walk. That's how this limitation was finished up. Because God spoke into the matter. This morning, God is about to speak. And I want you to believe because there are several of us that are limited by sickness, physical sickness physical sickness. Eh? You know, there are some kind of sickness that somebody will have. And if you are talking about getting married, eh? Are you following me? He will not know how to even talk about marriage. Am I saying the truth? The person wants to get married. But that sickness, he will be asking himself, how can I say this thing before people? Eh? How, can I, how can I say it? Some will be so much ashamed that they will hide it. But you see, the marriage system of the enlightened 
enlightened, has made it so clear that you cannot hide anything. Because they will send you to lab. Are you getting me? And everything in the lab will speak. So you better open up on time. Because by the time the lab result comes out, what you are hiding will come up and you become a wire person. So sometimes people will think, how am I going to? How, how, are you following me at all? How, this is a limitation. I remember somebody that is physically impotent. Physically. And he told me that I want to get married. And the question is, how is he going to tell the lady that he wants to marry? He said he wants to marry, but he is impotent physically. Are you getting it? So, it is until God arises in that case, that object of shame will, will not be rolled away. And this August, from today, are you, are you there? From today, every limitation must go. Amen. Let me talk about financial limitation. Because for several of us, I discovered that we are average income earners. In fact, the percentage of many of us, eh, we have high income earners. Do you know what I'm talking about? We have average income earners. And then we have low income earners. Now, if God wants to help this work, this ministry, this level, what he's going to do is to give us high income earners. Make a, a lot of us to become, I mean, those of us that are here online, if you know you want to move from low income earning, average income earning to high income earning, can I see you up? <laughs> Yes, I know that a lot of us. But you see, you ask yourself, how many years have I been in average income earning? When am I going to rise to this high income earning? Now, if you are not careful, you will think that it is a normal thing. No, it's not normal. There are forces that are saying, we will not allow this man to live a comfortable life. Do you know that apart from kingdom advancement, apart from kingdom advancement, one other reason why God gives us wealth and riches is so that we will live a comfortable life. Are you aware? Are you aware that God is comfortable in heaven? You are not, you are not getting me. If you see how they describe heaven, you know that heaven is a beautiful place. Jesus said, I am going to build a man. So, there is a building. He took time to design, build it very well. Now, for some of us, we are not even talking about building your own house. We are talking about paying your house rent. And it's a struggle. And in this season, when you have economic crisis, and I think, you know, people, some people say they want to do hunger protests, and all of that. In a season like this, you know that people, even those who are at average income earning are being pushed down to low income earning. There are forces in the realm of the spirit that are manipulating finances. Apart from people working hard, diligence and all of that. I have also seen people that are working hard making money but they will tell you I don't know how the money is going and coming. People have come for counseling and say man of God I make money I am sure of what I'm telling you. But at the end of the day, I won't know how the money just left my hand. How it was spent. I don't know what is happening to me. Pray for me. Now, the person that is saying this did not have this experience once. It has repeated and repeated and repeated. So he now noticed that my problem is not even about making money. My problem is about keeping money. Are you getting it? So this morning... Many of us, even if you say, I am not sick, I don't have uh, impotence, I'm not blind, I am not uh, 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 crippled, I am not with that. But, see, your finances may be experiencing some level of limitation. You may not know that there is a meeting somewhere, and after the meeting, an embargo was placed over you that you will not have million naira in your account. 
So when your account is coming or coming, getting to 500,000, 800,000, something will strike and the whole thing will go away. That's why God was talking about embargo. Embargo. There are some of us that even when the money enters, you, it is brought down immediately. Because something is saying, you can't reach here. How come you get here? And the, the forces will just pull it down immediately. And so, this morning, every financial limitation, I see wholeness coming around somebody financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. By mercy, Jesus located the man. And of course, you see, rise. I'm still looking at how the technology that Jesus used in solving this limitation it is by word of declaration. Are you getting me? I'm going to make some declarations. That's why we are here. That's why it's an impartation service. I'm going to make declaration over your finances. And I want you to believe the prophet. Second Chronicle 20, 20 says, Believe God and you'll be established. You remember? Believe God, you'll be established. But you need to believe his prophet. And you will become prosperous. So, establishment comes from believing God. But prosperity comes from what? Believing the man of God. Believing the man of God. So, embargoes are lifted the same way they are placed. Limitations are lifted the same way they are placed. Are you getting me? They are not getting me. When the devil want to limit a man. Look at what they normally do. When they are making a sham, making sacrifices of the animal they want to use to make sham, eh? by the time they are making that, they are making some enchantments, making some declarations, saying this person will never rise in this family. He will never rise. He will be saying it as he's making the sacrifice. So we even do some negative prophetic action. They will carry something and say, this person, this thing is representing this person. And they will put it in a bottle. And they will close the bottle, lock it, cock it, and throw it into the river. To ensure that this person, nobody even see the bottle and break it. Are, are you getting me at all? After, so in that way, they will limit that person permanently. It will only take God and the man of God on the positive side to come up and make declaration and say every negative pronouncement every limitation that has been placed over your life over your finances, over your ministry over your forward movement they are cancelled now the moment the man of God does that too the positive spirit angels are moved into action the negative spirit are released to execute the enchantment of native doctors, witch doctors, occultic doctors, and all of them. Are you getting it at all? So this is the way things are done in the realm of the spirit. That's why a politician will not kill a fowl. A Yahoo boy will not kill a goat. He will look for his and why. Are you getting me? You are not getting me. There are people that are already connected to the spirit realm, negative spirit realm. So they know that if they do this thing on their own, it will not work. That's why they are flocking there. And when the woman or the man is doing and is working, is working, manipulation are going on physically because things has been said in the spirit. In the same way, whoever put this man in this condition, however he got to this condition, by the word of declaration, rise! Take up your bed and walk. That was the end. That was the end. Are, are you getting me? Whether it is buried in the ground or you don't need to waste energy trying to dig it out. Even if you dig it out eh, and the, the, the word doesn't go with power, they will bury another one. Are you getting it? But when you make a declaration, how did they put it there? They didn't put it physically. They put it spiritually. So it will also go spiritually. Are you following me at all? Yes. Now, when Jesus found this man, I want to end from there before we begin to pray. Verse, um, 
from verse 11, he answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, What man is that which said unto you, Take up your bed and walk? Who is that man? Eh? They were wondered. They were wondering. Verse 13, And he that was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus has conveyed himself away. A multitude being in that place. is repeating that a multitude is there. Jesus just visited this man and conveyed himself away. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Can somebody say sin no more? Say it three times. Sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. Jesus found this man and said, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the people it was Jesus that made me whole. Now, this particular thing that Jesus told this man, listen, is an indication that it was his sin that caused the problem. Are you, are you, are you there? Yes. He says, Sin no more, lest a, a worse problem will come to you. It was why he is telling lies that the ancestral spirits that are in his ancestry line caught up with him. It was why he went into pornography. It was why he began to commit masturbation that they began to place limitation over what limited everybody in that lineage. It was why he went to enter masquerade court and entered that all the ancestral covenants he inherited it too. Are you getting me at all? See, nothing happens for nothing. Limitations come from the devil, but they have a road through which they enter into a man. A cause, causeless cannot stand. Yes. It must have a room to, through which it enters. Will you also confirm with me that if, if it is not mercy, Eh? the first thing Jesus would have want to handle in the life of this man is his sin. Are you getting me? But when he came, he didn't talk about sin. He know that it was sin that caused this problem. He didn't start with talking about sin. He just showed him mercy, just to tell you that this is based on mercy. Then he now returned back and said, mercy has brought this open door. Mercy has brought this miracle. Are you getting me at all? You see, this is a warning. I hope you know this is a warning. Jesus came to warn the man and said, you are made whole. Your business has started moving. Eh? Are you there? Yes, you are started progressing academically. Make sure that you are paying your tithe. There are several people that, you know, their business begin to go down, go down, go down. And the only sin they committed is that they are financially unfaithful. They are not paying their tithe. They are not, they are not, they are just unfaithful. And based on that unfaithfulness, that finance was attacked. As God is restoring your finances back today, what is he telling you? What is he telling you? Let me talk to your neighbor. What is he telling you? Sin no more. Less a worse thing will happen to you. Because what came to you before, it was as a result of your carelessness. And now that you are made whole, the enemies are not happy. They want to bring greater trouble to your life. Make sure that you are not toiling with sin. Make sure that you are not playing with lies. Make sure that you are not unfaithful with money. Because that unfaithfulness can become a way of the enemy coming back again. Make sure that you don't turn to become a slave because the Bible said a borrower is what? A slave to the lender. 
Make sure that you are financially straight so that the worst will not happen. Make sure that you don't trust a man because cause is he that put his trust in who? Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Cause and God is an idolatry. God hates it. Trusting in money, trusting in men is a worship of idol. Is a worship of men. God is jealous of worship. Make sure that you sin no more. So that what happened to you before now, what you are delivered from, will not happen again. I have not taken in for seven years after marriage. And li limitation is broken and you took in. Make sure that you don't begin to meddle and toil with sin. So that miscarriage will not come and kill that baby. You know, it, it, it has happened to people. They will be rejoicing that they have taken Before you know it, they will have miscarriage. So we give birth and the baby will die. Sin no more. Sin no more. And I keep saying, if there is nothing like sinning no more, will Jesus require it from a man? That's why online, on site, you must encounter the Savior. You must give your life to him. You must experience not just forgiveness from the ones you have sinned, but salvation that will empower you to sin no more. It was the same thing he told the woman that was caught in adultery. He said, I am not condemning you. Go and sin what? What is meaning of no more? Some of you are doing well in your business until you started telling lies. Until you started being unfaithful. When people come to buy, you start telling lies. And after telling lies, you say, God, forgive me. And from that point, your business started going down. Some of you are doing well academically until you begin to do exam and practice. From the time you went to special center and got your work and your jump and all of that, you, 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 you are wondering why is it that in, the, in this high institution, I'm not doing as good a, as, as I'm doing when I, while I, I was in secondary school. Something has come to limit your academic acumen because you have tempered with sin. Make your life straight. Sin no more. So that what happened to you before, the limitation that the Lord is about to remove or he has removed already will not return back in a greater way. So for you to be free from limitation, it comes by the word. But after limitation is broken, you must maintain a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, so that that which happened before will not happen again. So this morning, if you are ready, can you say, I am ready? I'm ready to break out. I am breaking out already from every limitation by the word of God. Can you rise on your feet and begin to pray?